One question I get asked very frequently is, is following a ketogenic diet safe and healthy? And I would say if you do it properly, it is very safe and very healthy. And the issue, you know, is now there's a lot of um, conflicting information about this. And you see doctors on both sides, some of them really promoting a ketogenic diet and its benefits. And other people saying, oh, this could be very detrimental to your health and ranging with problems from kidney stones to heart attacks to Alzheimer's disease. And uh, that is actually very much incorrect. So, you know, I think to understand first what is a ketogenic diet, I think we have to understand a bit what are the differences in a diet. Generally, for weight loss, if someone does not want to be or, you know, or, um, you know, has no experience with a ketogenic diet, I don't even recommend them going on it. You know, I generally say go on a low carb diet. And what's that? So, low carb essentially is somewhere between 50 to 100 grams of carbs a day. Um, all these, and these are, this is the keto group, you know, there's tremendous overlap. So you're gonna eat healthy things, but you're adding in besides, you know, the low carb veggies, the meat, seafood, eggs, oils, good oils we're talking about here, uh, butter and all these things, you can add some complex carbs like oatmeal, whole wheat bread, possibly. Again, I don't like the idea of uh, too much gluten. It's not that, you know, everybody suddenly has celiac disease, but, but it's that gluten is highly inflammatory and can cause leaky gut. So there's some issues with gluten that I don't like. But it can be certainly you know, in moderation been eating on a, a, a you, you can incorporate it on a low carb diet. You know, there's no issue with that. Um, and then low glycemic fruit, blueberries and raspberries. On a low carb diet and on a keto diet, you can eat raspberries and blueberries, you know, amongst some other berries as well, maybe strawberries as well in small amounts. On the low carb diet, you can eat a bit more of that. The other fruit, again, you know, like apples, bananas, and all those, I think have just too much fructose. And fructose, I talk about in another video, is a sugar that I don't like at all because it causes a lot of issues. It's not immediately used in your skeletal muscle and your brain, and so it has to go through the liver and then basically gets easier stored as fat. And that's really where it ends up, and it doesn't do us any favors. So fructose is not great, you know. But yeah, so on the low carb diet, you just have more flexibility. You still want to have some of the ingredients that you would follow on a ketogenic diet, but you can add in uh, uh, some more carbs and you know, uh, oatmeal in the morning, for example, that's absolutely fine there, right? But again, keeping it between 50 to 100 grams of carbs a day. Ketogenic diet, so you have to really go in general below 40 grams of carbs a day because on a low carb diet, you're still running on normal glucose metabolism. So your mitochondria using glucose, citric acid cycle, making ATP, you know, that's the thing we've studied in biology and that's something that holds very true even for a low carb diet. But by decreasing the carbohydrates, you know, and uh, especially I always recommend to make the last meal without carbohydrates overnight, you do actually briefly go into sort of a ketogenic state, but the body starts to burn fat, you know? So you don't have to be strictly ketogenic to experience that, it's just, you know, a lot better if you are on a ketogenic diet, okay? So on a ketogenic diet, has to be very low. Some people need to go under 30 grams of carbs a day. And I'll tell you what, that's really tough. And when I started uh, going onto a ketogenic diet, I made tons of mistakes. And I didn't uh, understand exactly where there were hidden carbs, for example. And I used terrible oils, for example, too, because, you know, also I ate too much fat. Because the idea is, oh, you can eat as much fat as you want. And that's not quite true. You do want, uh, to lose your own body fat. That's the store that your body you know, needs to get rid of. And if you keep feeding your body with too much fat, then the issue is you're never gonna burn your own body fat. So that's one of the misconceptions on going on a ketogenic diet the wrong way. Anyway, but you wanna kind of keep it at least below 40 grams of carbs a day, that's very important. Again, low carb veggies are always good. Those are most of your green veggies actually. Um, meat, seafood, eggs, oils. Now the oils are important and I did a video about that. And this is one issue where you will have one person on a ketogenic diet doing very well and another person really messing up their health because their oils, if, if it's bad oils, what are the bad oils? You know, there might be canola oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, and, and all of those are terrible oils. And certainly if your diet is heavy on those because you're allowing yourself more fat on a ketogenic diet, you can really mess up your health. And yes, you can even probably get early Alzheimer's because these oils by themselves, and I talked about in the video about you know, the three causes of uh, uh, modern diseases, um, that's one of them, you know, and we gotta be careful with that. But then you might have a person who says, okay, I'm gonna have only healthy fats and I'm not gonna go overboard on it. And for example, they will have avocado oil and coconut oil, and they might eat some butter, you know, and olive oil, and, and they're doing fine, they're doing actually great. And that's a huge difference, right? So this is something, I'm gonna address that in a second again. 
that's hard to control when you just have a group, oh, this is a keto group. It, it, there's such huge variations in how you do it that that could be an issue. All right, and then we have the carnivore group, and that's basically people that do in a very extreme ketogenic diet. So they're really going very, very low on the carbs just by virtue of eating only animal products. Now that has been done. It hasn't been, I think, as well documented. There are cases still where uh, people and even civilizations for part of the year live just on that and they're thriving and doing very well with very low incidence of diseases. So I think it's possible to do it. I mean, practically, I'm not a big fan of a carnivore diet. I think that is very extreme. Um, also, I don't know if necessarily, you know, you want to cut out things so drastically, but I think that people can, if they do it properly, also thrive on a carnivore diet. There's no question about that. So now back to the point, is a ketogenic diet healthy or are there, are, are there risks? And then you have, again, what's interesting to me, you know, doctors, I mean, I'm a primary care physician. You have people um, from all sort of medical backgrounds uh, really either praising it or really, really, really putting down the ketogenic diet. And with, you know, really, um, yeah, it, it, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Because again, what we learn in medical school about nutrition and diet is uh, very minimal. I'd say about five good lectures, the food pyramid and low fat uh, diet is preached. And this is not working for us. We know today we are way unhealthier than we were about 100 years ago. And what have we done? We're eating more carbohydrates. We're eating more of those horrible vegetable oils that I just talked about. And, you know, uh, you know, and we're consuming things packed in plastic. And again, these are all things that have changed. Um, and, you know, to say keep following this, this has been working great, it's kind of really weird. We're getting fatter, we're getting sicker, you know, and one of the reasons is the nutrition that we're that we taking in. So again, now when you say, when some of the physicians say, oh, the ketogenic, diet, the ketogenic diet is very bad for you and a lot of disease can happen, and they're quoting a study. Again, it's not an easy study to do with nutrition anyway. I think it's a very difficult thing to do. And many people, many patients that come to me and say, I'm on a ketogenic diet are clearly not, or they are eating things that are terrible. And uh, if you eat things that are terrible for you, no matter what diet you follow, you want to probably get sick. I mean, that's just how that kind of works. So again, you, when you think about most trials that are conducted, for example, to see is a medication safe or not, we're trying to match groups very well. That means, you know, you're going to have a group that might take a placebo. So we don't know who's taking the real medication and who isn't and a group who's taking the actual active ingredient. And let's say it's a tablet with one ingredient. So you're matching the groups by age, by gender, by everything. And then the only thing you're varying is giving that one pill a day. And that's something we can control fairly well. Now imagine following uh, dietary groups for longer periods of time. And one group is a ketogenic group and one group is uh, you know, eating a low carb or regular carb diet. And then comparing the benefits or the health risks. How do you control for all the parameters what people are eating? You know, one person might eat heavily uh, meats and maybe bad meats that are not so good for you, you know, processed and whatever. Some people might eat on a ketogenic diet all these bad oils I talked about, the soybean oil, canola oil and all that, you know, because they might be vegan and they're having a hard time finding or they, they, they want to exclude animal products, you know, and that might be an issue as well. So these are things that come into, these are huge variations that we kind of can't overlook and comparing groups and matching groups uh, precisely is very difficult. The other thing is, how do we get our data? It's usually questionnaires. So people have to mark, okay, I'm eating this, 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 and here's my food journal. And, you know, this is also very tricky because sometimes people lie or they forget or they, you know, they, they know what they should eat, but they didn't eat that and they write it anyway. That's how we got this whole debacle with the low fat diet. And, and that, that was supposed to be superior, you know, to, uh, other diets and it's it's not the low fat diet has been horrible and we see this today in in disease progression but back then for example they said well we found out that eating meat causes cancer but who was a meat eater when you look at the questionnaires and it was done 50 60 70s you know because it's all questionnaires and it's usually you know retrospective data they say well who's a meat eater and people for example that ate pepperoni pizza and, and hot dogs they were put into the meat group because they contained meat um, now, that group usually also probably had a high disregard for their health and they might have been smokers and heavy drinkers. So again, it's very difficult to control for these factors. So I would say this, um, and my approach would be for most people that want to lose weight, um, a low carb diet works extremely well. You know, cutting your carbs down to 50 to 100 grams a day, 
um, cutting out all the bad oils, these vegetable oils I keep talking about. So your soybean oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, cut all those out, replace with healthy oils in moderation, of course, you know, uh, butter, avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, those are all fine. And those are very, very healthy to do. Then having some, you know, low glycemic fruit like blueberries and raspberries, that's all fine. So if you follow that, that's actually um, great. 50 to 100 grams a day, most people do great. Last meal of the day, no carbs. Now, people that do want to go on a ketogenic diet, they should just follow the healthy parameters. And then I think if you're on a strict ketogenic diet, you should probably have labs done. Some people don't do it, I understand that. But you know, to be safe, check your cholesterol before, check your hemoglobin A1C, check, check some inflammatory markers. There is a subgroup of, of, of people that go on a ketogenic diet and their cholesterol shifts in a bad way. And I did a video about cholesterol. Um, again, what I'm mostly looking at, that your HDL is going up, that it's high, that your triglycerides are very low. And on a ketogenic diet, that usually happens because that's heavily influenced by carbohydrates. And since we're really cutting those out as much as possible, triglycerides do come down. And then the LDL to me is secondary. And then some people say, oh, your yeah, LDL went up a little bit. Well, the LDL again, and I mentioned this in the other video, is neither good nor bad. I mean, it's actually very useful. It has carries cholesterol that is needed very much for hormone synthesis, for example, for testosterone, but it's also very healthy for your brain. We need uh, cholesterol there as well. But again, checking health parameters and following a good ketogenic diet and really going under that 40 grams of carbs. Um, and the best way to do it then is to check you know, ketone levels. Initially, some people do it with these urine strips. However, keep in mind, that only works for about a month or so because if you are in ketosis, initially you're wasting a lot of those ketones because your body doesn't know quite to do with it yet. And then you trace it in the urine. Once your body gets uh, good at using them, once you've trained your mitochondria to use them for fuel better, then you know that, that ketone stick might not react anymore. Um, there's also, you know, you can measure it in your blood. I think that's the better way to do if you want to do that. And there are certain signs and there's many videos on how do you know you're in ketosis and you can watch them and there are certain signs you can observe as well. But if you're really good about understanding that you really go between the, I mean, aim for 30 grams of carbs a day, most likely you go a bit higher because, you know, we're always miscalculating here and there. Um, and uh, always combine all of these diets, I would say, with a period of what I would call intermittent fasting. Some people say time-restricted eating. So at least a period of somewhere between 14 and 17 hours of no food, strictly no food, no you know, sugar, agave or sweetener or whatever else, and you know, just really water and black coffee, tea in the morning and all those things. Then you're gonna be very successful with them. Um, if I, or, or I can tell you for myself, what I did was I went on a ketogenic diet with a lot of mistakes initially. Um, I probably still make some mistakes today. But um, at some point I felt great, I lost a ton of fat. My blood markers get tr got tremendously better. My cholesterol actually improved tremendously. My triglycerides went down, my HDL went up, and my LDL stayed sort of stable. Um, my inflammatory markers went down and my hemoglobin A1C, which was already at 5.8, so you know that's kind of getting in the range of pre-diabetes, went down. And I lost you know, a good five, six inches on my waist in fat. You know? So I lost a lot of fat, which was really what, what I wanted to do. And I did that for a while. And for most people, I would recommend if you do it strictly, if you do it well, if you do it controlled with good foods, do at least three to six months on a strict ketogenic diet. Um, of course, this is not medical advice. Check with your doctor if you're healthy for this. There might be um, conditions where you shouldn't be on it. So I can't really tell you this without, you know, obviously knowing more about your condition uh, or your conditions. But then after three to six months, you can then slowly start to incorporate some carbs again. And that's what I'm doing now. I was on a strict ketogenic diet, I would say for at least a year. And then now uh, in the mornings before, uh, or sorry, after my, some of my workouts, so I always work out in a, in a fasted state, um, I sometimes have a small amount of oatmeal, oatmeal with um, a bit of uh, protein and some uh, blueberries or raspberries in there and a tiny bit of salt. And it's actually very interesting. So this is one of the things that I recommend you uh, look at um, a YouTuber called Thomas De Lauer. He is excellent in explaining some of these aspects on how to tweak your ketogenic diet. He's a big proponent of the diet. And um, he gives, I think, a very good understanding of how to get into it. He's certainly one person that I watched a lot when I started my ketogenic diet very knowledgeable. And also he talks about things when you want to kind of mix in some carbs at some point, what's a good way to do it. So I like that. Um, 
And so now I'm incorporating carbs, I would say on four days a week. The idea why you should be for three to six months on a strict ketogenic diet is that you train your body to have this metabolic flexibility. And that means that you can switch between burning fats and burning sugar very easily. If you're too long on a ketogenic diet, one downfall I could foresee is that you forget how to use carbohydrates. And then when you go back on carbohydrates, you might have some issues. But again, for all practical purposes, I think doing a ketogenic diet on the right parameters, you know, and if you're not one of those people that might fall into, uh, in, uh, into having a very bad shift in their cholesterol, and there's very few people where this happens, that's why I recommend to do labs, um, can be very healthy. Um, and again, but it has to be done properly. Um, and again, then after a while, you can be more flexible in it. And I think that's probably the way that I would recommend this for most people. And again, remember this. So when you are in the ketogenic state, you know, that the idea is initially that you really train your body to burn those ketones. So that means your, your you know, fat is broken down in the liver into these ketone bodies and the ketone bodies feed the mitochondria. And instead of burning glucose, now they're very good at burning um, these ketone bodies and they're burned cleaner. And the one thing is from a cellular perspective, when you burn ketones, so when you are in ketosis, it is running much cleaner because you have less of these radical uh, um, uh, oxygen species and things that build up. So you have less of these free radicals that are produced in a normal citric acid cycle metabolism because you're changing it a bit because you're now using ketones and you're breaking it down cleaner. So kind of running an electric engine with very few, if any, emissions Whereas our regular glucose metabolism is more like a diesel engine with a lot of emission and a lot of uh, toxins that then need to be broken down further. Otherwise, they can become problematic for your cell later. So again, the, ket uh, the ketogenic diet can be very healthy if done properly. Um, I think the physicians rating against it, many of them, I would argue, don't have the proper background. Uh, if you ask the nutritionists, I mean, they all learned the food pyramid. They all learned the low, low carb diet. And if you've been preaching that all their lives, it's kind of also hard to make that change at this point for them to understand. Well, look, we have new data that shows, you know, these kind of ideas that we have learned in the past were not quite correct. And it's difficult to admit that sometimes. So again, uh, most people I think do great on a low carb diet. Um, I would recommend if you do it under guidance and, and, and lab work, um, it is probably a good idea to go on a ketogenic diet, at least for the three to six months, very strict. Train your body to be metabolically flexible. And then you can incorporate carbs again and go more on a low carb diet for a while. You know, always see how you respond. Okay, that's very important. A carnivore diet, again, some people thrive on that. I uh, personally would not want to go on it. Also, I don't like the idea of consuming that much meat. And, you know, not necessarily from, from a health perspective, but a bit more from an ethical perspective and what's available. I think we're you know, um, should be a bit more, you know, conservative in terms of our environment. And, you know, I mean, certainly when you have things or when you have animals that are, uh, uh, you know, farmed on you know, grass fed and all that, that makes a difference. Absolutely. But, I, you know, I like the idea of mixing in other things as well. And I think there's some benefits to certain vegetables as well. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Carnivore diets. So again, who would benefit from that, I believe, is someone who has severe autoimmune disorders. So there is a subgroup of people that really have, um, you know, really an allergic response um, against some of the foods they eat. And that mostly will come from plants. It's very rare to have that against meats. It can be against eggs, sure. But, you know, meats are very, very, you know, I mean, non-reactive when it comes to inflammation and especially in autoimmune disorders. So someone that has an autoimmune disorder, we're thinking about things like psoriasis, for example, you know, eczema. Uh, there's others as well, of course. And then you can see, well, when we're cutting out all our plants and then going on a carnivore diet, do things get better? And if they do, then we know something was triggered by some of the plants we're eating. And then the next step would be, okay, now we can slowly at some point integrate plants one at a time. Um, and if no reaction happens, then that is certainly something that we can tolerate. If we get to the point where suddenly symptoms come back, then we know that that was the culprit. But that's kind of an el elimination diet. And in that aspect, I think it could be very valuable. Okay, so there was a lot of general information. I think, you know, if you do a low carb or ketogenic diet, you will be absolutely fine if you do it on the right parameters. And um, I think we've learned, you know, in the past that our current approach with a low fat diet does not work. And that's certainly something that, you know, we need to explore a bit more now with the new options that we have. 
and especially cutting down carbs and bad oils and uh, you know again the plastics <laughs>